India, with 29 states and almost 1.4 billion people. It's nearly impossible to know where to begin exploring this vast and rapidly changing country and how music here has found such a distinctive voice. I'm Ruri Glasheen, I'm a percussionist and I've been obsessed with drums and rhythm for as long as I can remember. Almost every musical tradition in the world has its own drum and for me it's the most incredible way through which to experience and understand different cultures. The rhythm is always inside us, anybody, we need to explore that. So even the heartbeat, there is a proper rhythm, everything is rhythm, okay, life is all about rhythm. You walk, there's a rhythm, you run, there's a rhythm, you dance, there's a rhythm. For everything, there's a rhythm. So you can easily connect to rhythm something that makes you dance. And percussion gives you that, without any language again. India is probably one of the most inspirational places on earth to visit as a musician. Music is such a hugely important part of local and national identity and it's really as diverse as the 1.4 billion people that live here. Rhythm plays an integral part in most forms of music in India and there are a whole range of indigenous drums and percussion instruments which date back thousands of years. Drumming is particularly important in both of India's classical music traditions. Hindustani music, which is found in the north, and Carnatic music from the south. Now, I've come to India to learn about a drum called the Kanjira, which is used in the southern classical tradition, the Carnatic tradition of classical Indian music. It's arguably one of the hardest percussion instruments from the Indian subcontinent to master. There's only really a handful of players who specialise in this incredible instrument. I want to see the instruments, meet the players, understand their lives and document and share the real human stories behind these incredible musicians who are drumming new life into ancient traditions. Rhythm is an integral part of almost all forms of music here and there are a whole range of different percussion instruments that go back thousands of years. Drumming is particularly important in both of India's classical music traditions, Hindustani music from the northern states and Carnatic from the south. Whilst today Hindustani and Carnatic traditions are entirely separate, they both emerged from the same Hindu Vedic texts which provided the bedrock for music in all of India. Between the 12th and 16th centuries, the Mughal Empire invaded India from its northern border, bringing with them Islamic art and culture from Persia and the Arab Peninsula. Whilst the Mughal's legacy is heard in the music, it's best seen in the architecture. Let's look at what is probably India's most iconic landmark, the Taj Mahal, which is a perfect example of the power and influence the Mughals had. Music began to diverge into two separate traditions during this period. The new influx of Persian and Arab influences in the north fused with the ancient Hindu principles to create a music with the primary role of entertaining the rich and powerful. Carnatic music in the south stayed true to its founding Vedic principles, with devotion to the gods being its primary purpose. This tradition was established, or at least standardised, by the many Hindu kings who fled from the north after the Mughal invasions and looked to crystallise the system of music that used to be common.
the most visible way to differentiate between these two traditions to an outsider like me is seen in the difference in instruments used in both traditions. From a percussive perspective, tabla is the most predominant drum used in Hindustani music, whilst the mridangam, the gatam, and of course the kanjira are used exclusively in Carnatic music. The focus of my trip is to learn about the kanjira, which is a Carnatic instrument, so I've been spending time in the southern states of Karnataka and Tamil Nadu where their tradition has evolved over the last several hundred years. My journey starts here in Bengaluru, the capital city of Karnataka. It's dubbed as the Silicon Valley of India because of its tech influence globally and indeed across the subcontinent. So I'm just on my way to meet two awesome young Carnatic percussionists, Sunad Anor, who's a Kanjira player, and Sashim Prakesh, who plays Mnadangam. I'm looking forward to meeting them, having a jam, learning a little bit more about this instrument, the Kanjira, and the role of music, and I guess the role of percussion in Carnatic music, and why it's so important. My family is, is a musical family. I'm the fifth generation of musician uh, that's been there. So music has been in my house all the time. 24 bar 7, it's just music, music and only music. It's another state, state of mind that you get in while you practice. And that, achieving that is something beautiful. You have to practice every day, every single day or else one day you don't touch the instrument and the next day instrument asks you who are you. It's like that. So you need a lot of practice, a lot of dedication to get to a level of performance. And then even on stage, since it's improvised music, you have to be like an eagle, you know, be intelligent and catch what you would you can take and fill in go and come back, it's crazy on stage. Sunad is one of the best young Kanjira players in India and has already built a reputation through winning competitions and performing concerts alongside senior Carnatic musicians. In addition to this, he is passionate about raising awareness and boosting the profile of the Kanjira. Not many people knows about know about the Kanjira, but I want to make it, you know, very very popular. That's my dream. When you practice, like you just have to forget everything that's going on in the world, your problems, your bills, and everything. Just focus on this and be happy. It's another state state of mind that you get in while you practice. And that, achieving that is something beautiful. And that requires dedication. So, dedication is very important. Even though it's this small, it's, it's like a monster. It will gel in so well with so many different types of genres of music.
the moment somebody is born the life starts with a basic rhythm of 72 bpm that is a heartbeat so your your life is all about rhythm you have a rhythm in everything you walk there's a rhythm you run there's a rhythm you dance there's a rhythm for everything there's a rhythm so even some song automatically you are not if you are not understand the language you still tap your feet for the beat the beat is the rhythm there's been so many people in my family who attended concerts and my mother is a classical singer and when i was a kid uh, i used to go with my father to her concerts she was accompanied by a mridangam artist and a violin artist and that's where i saw the instrument mridangam and i i came home after the concert i constantly used to find something that looks similar the sound similar the easiest one is to find a vessel in the house or a container which a rice box so i used to take them i used to bang them so of course it's a big noise but mridangam is not so that's why my parents felt that it's better to put him into mridangam than making him bang the vessels and containers of the house so that's where i started you need to start early so that your fingers listen to you you need to practice that first of all all these play- instruments are played in hand there are no sticks so you need to play them in your hand so that you need to train your fingers they have to become hard to bring that sound out so it takes a lot 3 to 4 it takes at least 3 to 4 years just to train your hands to bring the proper sound from the proper space so since the skin is divided into two or three layers you need to hit at the right point to get the right kind of tone so it's at least takes 4 years to just to understand the fingering and to get the right tone then you understand pattern then you understand the mathematical composition then you understand the uh, tala system and everything so it takes a long run so challenge is that you need to have that constant patience and you need to be so dedicated so that you will not let it go I was a uh, 5 year old when I started so then I started traveling to Bangalore for classes I met my guru MP Rajkesri sir who is a senior most disciple of Kare Kudi Mani sir so I came to him in 2003 and I started my I started my higher education with him so I used to travel every weekend that's how it started and later on yeah it's still going on from last 15 years now the learning has not stopped there's always a room for learning Carnatic music is passed on from generation to generation orally and to ensure the smooth succession of the tradition masters of each instrument or vocal group known as gurus take on student disciples for a long apprentice of total immersion in the art form I met with Sunad's guru Anur Anathkrishna Sharma to learn about what it takes to make it in Carnatic music and what he makes of the next generation of players in reference to south indian percussion instrument this is third generation which i am training so i am right now happy with them they are very good daily you have to look at your instrument and you have to carry it and you have to play it and you have to request the instrument that today i am going to play please cooperate because we percussionist is really hard i look at their interest their concentration and their passion they should have passion for music some more or the other they have to practice so you need to request you need to pray for three hours you have to be with me you have to be friendly with me so that so even like student also should be have such interest and uh, he should trust his master and master should trust student uh. The guru system is the lifeblood of the Carnatic music tradition. It's a practice that dates back thousands of years and based on an openness to learn and an openness to share. That openness is something I've experienced on a broader level each of the times I visited India. And whilst the crowded streets and sweltering heat can be exhausting, everything seems to balance on a wonderful alchemy. of order and chaos amongst the sensory explosion of sound and color open your eyes and ears just a little bit wider and you will always be rewarded
So this morning in Bengaluru, we are going to meet with Giritar Udupa, who's a very well-known Gatam player. We're hoping that he can tell us a little bit more about the roots of Carnatic music, and in particular, how the music itself is actually structured. Namaste, I'm Gatam Giridharudupa. Uh, I play a fantastic, wonderful, uh, very, very special instrument called Ghatam. The rhythm is always inside us, anybody. We need to explore that. For example, I say this everywhere, okay? I want to share it here also. When we walk, there's a rhythm. When you run also, there is a rhythm, right? And in, imagine if there's a... That means there's a problem with the leg, you know? So he has to consult a doctor. That means there's some variation in the um, rhythm. So even the heartbeat, there is a proper rhythm. Everything is rhythm, okay? Life is all about rhythm. <laughs> I can easily say the South Indian rhythm is probably the highly sophisticated rhythm structure in the entire world. We have everything in our system. You know, the system is so very well designed. To start with, we don't have any notation. As you know, the Western classical music, Western rhythm, you have a notation. You see the notation and you play the instrument. We need to sing rhythmically. That is called Konakol. Konakol is nothing but the South Indian rhythm language. We need to sing rhythmically and play this same thing. Imagine it's such a wonderful art because we don't see what is going to happen next. We know what is there going to happen next in the mind, you know. So if the structure is already here, then it is easy to come in the hands, right? Instead of looking and playing, it's already in the mind, in the body. Then it's easy to get to the, our hands. That's the best thing, right? The first and foremost, the rhythm cycle we have is eight beats cycle called Adi Thala. Tala is nothing but the rhythm cycle. It's an 8-beat cycle. I'll just show you how, how exactly it goes. Like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This is an 8-beat cycle, you know. So then we sing the first language. It is Tha, Di, Tom, Nam. It is nothing but A, B, C, D or An, Dutva, whatever even in a different language. This is our language. So we say this in three different speed. Tha, Di, Tom Nam Ta Di 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 Tom Nam Ta So this is how we learn. So when we are done, then we play the same thing. Somebody will somebody else will show our guru, my teacher, they will show the talam, the cycle. Then seeing that we try to play in Three different speeds. So this is how we learn. So this is our system. Tha, di, tom, nam. 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 Tha, tha, di, tom, nam. When 
even though there is some composition or some rhythm thing is fix, fixed few things composed is there but mostly it's improvisation music in the three hours hardly 30 minutes is can be composed like uh, traditional songs which is composed in uh, like 16th 17th century but the uh, improvisation can be one hour one and a half hours without uh, uh, any uh, rehearsals you know di to If you say takadimi takajono like this takadimi takajono takadimi takajono takadimi takajono takadimi, it's there's no life. So we need to add life. Takadimi takajono takadimi takajono takadimi takajono ta 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 takadimi takajono takadimi takajono takadimi takajono. Tari kada dekho, tari kada dekho da. Then we add another groove, and on top of that, few more layers, and make it more sounding like. ta so like this we try to improvise yeah. so this is all whatever i did everything is in in eight beat cycle in a four 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 you know taka dimi taka jondo taka every beat there is four notes mind-boggling stuff, though I am totally inspired by the density and complexity of Carnatic rhythms. Whilst I have a long way to go, I feel like I'm getting a little closer to understanding the basics at least. There are very few who know the history of the Kanjira and the story of how it was introduced into the lineup of Carnatic instruments. I'm back on the streets of Bengaluru to meet with musicologist and author Lalitha Ram. I want to find out where this fascinating drum has come from and who is responsible for creating it. This you know, single-faced small drum exists in the Indian tradition for more than thousand years. You can see that in the sculptures of temples which are more than thousand years old and also in literature where you can see this instrument, with references to this instrument. But the instrument in today's Karnatic context, the Kanjira, that would be to Pudukote Manpundia Pillai in the 19th century. He was the one who devised this instrument. Manpundia Pillai was a light bearer in the court of Pudukotai, which is around 400 kilometers south of Bengaluru and Chennai. He was the first percussionist to use lizard skin on the Kanjira, and he also reduced the number of jingles from three to one. From what uh, information we have, we know that uh, he was so fascinated uh, once he heard the performance of Nannu Mia and Chotu Mia, when, where they used to sing while they played the dolak, it's the two-sided drum. You know, he used to play that without any formal training on it, he used to go, you know, play freestyle. And then once during the performance at the palace, at some point of time he had, you know, he was so moved that he actually exclaimed, wow. And then you can imagine, right, in the, at that time, you know, when all these dignitaries are sitting in a palace, this guy is a staff who is holding the light. And then he goes, wow. So how others would just look down on him. So somebody had made a sarcastic comment who said, you know what, you should leave your profession now that you seem to be so interested in percussion and music. Why don't you just go and learn? Somebody has said that in, I mean, that was just sarcasm. But uh, our man took it so seriously. Mampundia Palai approached a local Tavil guru and begged him for lessons. The guru reluctantly made him a deal that by night he would work at the palace as a light bearer and by day he would study rhythm with him. 
His passion and talent were immediately evident. It comes so naturally to him. It's almost like somehow the nature has picked him to be such a legend and to become a path breaker. Basically, whatever his guru was teaching, he was able to play that rhythmic pattern just with one hand, with just the fingering on the one hand. So he tells him, you know what, now this whole performance scenario is changing. Now a lot of concerts are coming into play. You, know, you should go and see if you can use the skill and devise your own instrument to express yourself. And from that moment in history, the Kanjira as we know it today was born. Since Mampundia Palai, the most significant player to push the tradition forward was Guru Hari Shankar Sir, who was born in Chennai in 1958. There was a guy who, you know, who the, at least in my generation, people I have seen who had throng to listen just because a Ganjira player was performing, that was Hari Shankar. Even today, you go to any Carnatic uh, musician, just mention Hari Shankar the name, the vibes you get is unbelievable. He was phenomenal. In 2002, at just 44 years of age, the music world was rocked by the untimely passing of Hari Shankar. I have always wondered what would it mean if Hari Shankar had to lead the show in a concert, you know, when he was, at least the percussive part, if he was all alone, you know, if, if he has to play throughout the concert without having to just keep responding or just keep filling in or play in tandem if he has to be just on his own, on his kanjira. Did he really get enough opportunities to showcase what his complete brilliance? How would he take, how would he lead, how would he compose a musical piece? It's something, unfortunately, which we have not seen enough of that. Lalitha Ram was able to introduce me to one of the closest living connections to Hari Shankar, Sri Muruganandram, who happened to be visiting the city during my trip. So we've hopped in the tuk-tuk, we're scooting across town, it's rush hour here and it's very busy, we've got a great tuk-tuk driver, he's going as fast as he possibly can and it's a very important opportunity for us, I guess, on our last day here in the city to meet with the first point of contact, the man who used to make Guru Hari Shankar's Kanjiras. Sri Mudo Ganandram worked closely with Hari Shankar to design and build his Kanjiras and I was lucky to be given the opportunity to meet with him, to learn how these drums are made and to ask him about the legend. <laughs> Ah, sorry, 
மிருதங்க நேரங்களே கட்ட அவங்க தயார் பண்ணும் அதை நம்ம வாங்கிட்டு வந்து இந்த காசு போட்டு காசு போட்டு ஆ ஃபோட்டோ பண்ணி நம்ம போடுவோம் Kanjiras are made using the skin of a monitor lizard. It's dipped in water for several hours to improve its elasticity and then smoothed out by hand before being dipped in water again for several more hours. This procedure is repeated for several days until the skin achieves the right consistency. Whilst today most skins are glued to the jackwood frame of the drum, the legend goes that Hari Shankar used a simple boiled rice paste to attach his skins to the drum's frame, which almost mystically seemed to stick. You are dead. This is very good. Very sharp, my lord. This is very good. This is why you buy it. ஹரிசங்கர் ஒருத்தர் வாய்த்தாரு அவரை பார்த்து அதை கேட்டு நல்ல முறையில் வாய்த்தா அவங்கெல்லாம் நல்லா வரலாம் நினைச்சிடலாம் அதுக்கு புத்தி வேணும் அவர் வாசிக்கிறது நம்ம என்ன பார்த்துட்டு கேட்டுக்கிட்டு வாசிக்கிறது அப்படிலாம் நினைப்பாங்க இல்லையா இப்போ இப்போ உள்ள பசங்க குருகுலம் சரியாக பண்ணுறது கிடையாது இப்போ நான் தான் வாஜார் நான் தான் வாஜார் நீங்கள் தான் வாஜார் நீங்கள் தான் வாஜார் எல்லாம் சிஷ்யங்களே கிடையாது எல்லா வித்வானம் பெரிய பெரிய ஆளை மருதம் வாசிக்கிறவங்களா இடம் வாசிக்கிறவங்களா எல்லாரும் அவர்கிட்ட உட்காந்து இருக்கும் போது கொஞ்சம் இதாக தான் உட்காந்துருப்பாங்க அந்த மாதிரி அந்த வந்தா நிறைய பிரியமான பையன்கள் நிறையா அந்த மாதிரி எங்ஸ்டர் கிருஷ்ணா ரமணி அந்த மாதிரி சின்ன ஆளுங்களும் அவரோட ரொம்ப இன்னும் அந்த மாதிரி ஏதோ போயிட்டாரு From the legend of Hari Shankar to one of the most important dynasties in Carnatic rhythm. I'm about to meet with Lata Ramachar, who is the only female performing Kanjira artist in all of India. Her father, H.P. Ramachar, along with Hari Shankar, was one of the most important Kanjira artists of the 20th century. When, when I start Kanjira only, I start with my father's name only. Because of my father only, I have, now I am in the name of Kanjira Lata Ramachar. So, whatever I play, he has given me. He has taught me. He has given me. Historically, women have been underrepresented in Carnatic music circles. and it's down to the determination of artists like Lata who lead the way for a more equal future. Whenever they see this lady uh, playing Kanjira means some, some artist, some audience will be shocked. This lady artist, she's playing Kanjira means very great. Some artists refuse. This is very difficult to fight and come on stage. So uh, some, uh, well, some lady artist, sometimes they, uh, they go up to stage and they refuse there that makes uh, it, it gives a big pain for us why they refuse we don't know no not for this time we will play for uh, some other time next time like that and all so this as uh, this we face all we have faced like this i am the only 
ஆல் ஓவர் இண்டியா ஐம் ஓன்லி த ஏ கிரேட் ஆர்டிஸ்ட் இன் கஞ்சிரா பீங் ஏ லேடி லேடி ஆர்டிஸ்ட் இன் ஏ கிரேட் ஏ கிரேட் ஆர்டிஸ்ட் ஐ எம் ஓன்லி த ஏ கிரேட் ஆர்டிஸ்ட் ஐ எம் வெரி ப்ரௌட் ஆஃப் திஸ் ஆல்சோ ஐ ஓன்லி ஒன் இட் இஸ் வெரி டிஃபிகல்ட் my father has planned to make an all ladies group all ladies like murdangam also lady kanjura gatam morsing tavil and tabla like that he play planned and he trained so many of boys artists are there i would like to tell for ladies let them come let them practice that moment will be very happy yeah. that we feel very very happy i this what we suffer little bit no we will forget all the tough things what we suffered uh, all tough thing we will uh, forget and we'll be very happy that pain will be all go very well and we'll be very happy when the audience appreciate us mates for us no we are very happy how long we stay on the world we can go on playing we can play we will play we won't stop there is no retirement at all if our heart is very good our health is very good means we will play the ramachar dynasty lives on with lata son danesh following in his mother's footsteps first he will study the fundamentals of carnatic rhythm on madarangam before moving on to the kanjira with lata's inspiring words resonating in my mind my journey continues into the world of the kanjira tonight i am traveling from bengaluru in karnataka to tamil nadu's coastal city of chennai so we are currently on our way out of Bengaluru on this very snazzy all night bus to Chennai as you can see there is only sleeping berths it's going to be an interesting night to say the least we're going to arrive into Chennai at about 5:30 tomorrow morning all going well fingers crossed we make it Okay, so we have made it to Chennai after our all-night bus journey, which actually wasn't that bad. It was quite rocky, but we made it. We're going to meet with an incredible Kanjira artist called Shri Sundar Kumar. He's otherwise known as the Kanjira man and everyone has said when we come to Chennai we've got to meet him. So we're just about to knock on his door. and here his take on the kanjira i've been wondering if there are stylistic differences in kanjira playing from state to state and if i can expect to see any differences between bengaluru and chennai there is no difference between bangalore it's not about the state it is about individual personality who is playing the instrument it is not about the bangalore guy or chennai guy or kerala person or someone who's from andhra pradesh it's not like that or north or south it is about how you practice 
how you give inputs how much you are passionate about it, about your instrument that is more important my father is the main pillar for my music who supported he is everything he is my backbone if he is not there i cannot become like a musician actually his passion was mrudangam but his father my grandfather who not supported my father to become a musician so my father gave everything that is the that's a wound inside for him because he wanted to become a musician but finally he couldn't when i was kid my guruji is there his name is kare kudi armani my guruji said you take kanjira that's it all of a sudden started so my guruji was listening and uh, he said we just play kanjira i don't know myself i'm going to take kanjira surprise life always gives you surprise actually i didn't took this instrument the instrument took me very unique instrument even yeah. here in chennai and mm. in this region in southern indian music do you worry about the future of this instrument yeah really really but see instrument is god for us this is god he will know to take care of this instrument i am talking spiritual now i am really worried but i have faith of this instrument will take care himself it will give more players it will bring more players i have that belief really very strong belief i will try to spread this instrument that is my duty and it takes a huge amount of commitment from your students what do you think are the most important qualities for learning kanji yes uh obedient passion interest hardcore practice don't expect anything just do your work play with love give love talk with your instrument one day it will talk to you words of wisdom and great advice for any musician really And it's certainly given me food for thought as I head out to explore Chennai and see what this city has to offer. Chennai seems a little more chilled out than other cities I've visited in India. It's more spread out to start with, and it's home to the world's second largest urban beach, Marina Beach, which skirts the coastline between city and sea and overlooks the Bay of Bengal. 
Chennai is India's fourth largest city and each December hosts the world's biggest festival of Carnatic music and dance, the Margazi music season. As a result, to many it's viewed as the epicentre of Carnatic arts. Don't be fooled by Chennai's chilled character though. It's almost 40 degrees today with 100% humidity. This is a huge shift from Bengaluru, which is situated much higher above sea level on the Dekan Plateau, which is inland, making it considerably cooler. I can almost feel my skin burning after a few moments under the midday sun, and as the kanjira is made of skin, it must affect the instrument in some way. I'm about to meet with one of the most in-demand kanjira players, Aniruth Athreya, to talk about what the future holds for the drum, and if it handles the heat any better than I do. But this is going to have an effect on the skin of the kanjira, right? This heat? No, this heat is actually, you know, in a way good for the skin of the kanjira. In a place like India, the moisture level is very high. Yes. So it's the skin instrument that you're playing, right? When the moisture is too much, you know, the tension comes down and yeah. it becomes tough to, you know, actually still play the kanjira. Yeah. There's a little bit of heat ground that actually helps you, you know, to keep your kanjira in tune, in pitch. Great, so when you're doing a concert, maybe instead of having six kanjiras, you just need two or three. Yeah, right? yeah, that'll do, that'll do. Anidut comes from a musical dynasty. His grandfather was a professional violinist, and his great uncle was also a well-known Kanjira player. Whilst Anidut himself was a child prodigy, I'm interested to find out why many young people don't seem to be engaging with Carnatic music. The reason why a lot, a lot of people are not aware of you know what the Kanjira is and how it has contributed to you know just not just the Carnatic tradition but also to other musical traditions is because of the fact that you know people tend to associate this with only the Carnatic music tradition predominantly and Carnatic music tradition is such a niche tradition and not many people uh, know about the tradition or their exposure to this tradition or what people do uh, in the Carnatic music system or how the whole thing works uh, has not been made accessible to most people. With the purpose of showcasing the Kanjira, Anidut and three other players got together to create a Kanjira quartet, which became a viral YouTube sensation and brought the Kanjira into the spotlight. You know, the, the reason why we thought about, you know, forming this quartet was to sensitize people more to, you know, Kanjira more than being just an accompaniment on stage. You could actually, you know, try and feature this as an instrument by itself and come up with presentations that, you know, could be uh, presented in an interesting way so that we reach out to more people and, you know, more people start liking the instrument. technology and the internet and social media and all of that oh, yeah. in kind of reaching out to those new audiences. See the quartet that uh, we do, I mean the Laya Chetra, the Kanjira quartet, uh, the presentation that we do as a quartet, you know, is something different. You know, it's something that most people are not used to listening to. So when you want to reach out to a larger audience, technology comes into play. This is where your Facebook, or your Twitter comes into play. So that allows you to reach out to a global audience, not just the, uh, the people from your country, but to a wider audience, audiences that are exposed to other genres of music, not uh, apart from Carnatic music, or people exposed to both forms of music, both uh, Carnatic music and their form of music. So the perspective changes. See, art is such a powerful medium to connect people, you know, across the globe. It's such, it, it has to be inclusive. Uh, once art starts losing its inclusiveness, I don't think it's, you know, good for not just musicians pursuing the art, but also to, you know, the world at large. Not because we deserve, because the art deserves it. 
It's mutual. You know, I'm really curious to find out how many people outside Carnatic Music Circles actually know what the Kanjira is. So I'm just going to head out on the streets, see if I can find some young people to chat to, and ask them about the Kanjira, Carnatic Music. Just get a sense for how many people actually know what this instrument is. Have you heard a musical instrument called the Kanjira before? Uh, no, never heard of it. Have you heard of a musical instrument called the Kanjira? No. Good question. Ah, uh, yeah, sure. And have you heard of a musical instrument called the Kanjira before? No, no. Hello. Have you seen this before? You want to hold? <laughs> you want I, to learn this? I want to learn it, but what do you know what it's called? Uh, Baba? Is it Gabo Lingam? Gabo Lingam. Hey. <laughs> you want to go? So I know what I here. Have you heard of an instrument called the Kanjira? No. It's from South India. I have one here. Do you want to see <laughs> this, is, this is called the Kanjira. Okay, so not many people know about the Kanjira, but what I can say is that everybody was interested to learn about it and to find out more. So I wonder, is it a question of awareness for Carnatic music? And in particular, of course, the Kanjira. I met with Hari Har Sharma, a Chennai-based Kanjira player, to ask him why so many young people don't seem to be engaging with the Kanjira, or even with Carnatic music. culture which we have grown, uh, the Carnatic music which we say, uh, itself is not so popular in the culture which we have grown. That is the problem. It's not about the particular instrument like the Kanchira or the Morphing. They will be knowing the instrument, but they will not know which is that instrument. The Carnatic music is term for a certain uh, people. That is the way it has been throughout the uh, throughout the years. So that should not be, because it's like a gift from the God, which everybody has to have it. It's awesome to hear how open the current generation of players are to engaging with new audiences who maybe wouldn't otherwise have experienced the brilliance and beauty of Carnatic music. From all the instruments you could have chosen, you chose the Candida. Now the Candida is not maybe one of the most popular instruments in Carnatic music or maybe not even the most well-known. What specifically drew you to the Kanjira? I have a lot of musicians in my family. So when you see a lot of instruments and when one instrument seems like, come on, this instrument goes with all the instruments without any tuning and I, with a single Kanjira in my hand, I can play for any person. Like I don't need to change my instrument. So that sounds really good. And that too, when you're in your childhood, that sounds uh, astonishing. Like, so that is one reason, major reason which uh, like pushed me towards this instrument. I have to make sure this instrument has been little more popular in this world and because this instrument deserves it. This is one very old instrument in in our world and this has not got that kind of a recognition which it has to get it so my main aim is like th this instrument should get some good recognition in, in, in the world that is one main aim and I have to do certain amount of justice for this instrument. From the complexities and intricacies of the Carnatic music system to the fast and furious rhythms of the Kanjira for me, this truly has been an inspiring and enlightening journey. Despite the challenges the tradition faces, Carnatic music's ancient roots are entrenched in India's past and at the heart of its culture. The rhythms of this truly unique tradition have always evolved and adapted to the changing world it inhabits, and after meeting many of the brilliant players at the forefront of the tradition, I'm excited to see what the future holds.
Thank you all so much for checking out Hidden Drummers of India and I really hope that you've enjoyed getting to know these incredible artists. If you'd like to find out any more information about any of the musicians featured in this series, you can go to hiddendrummers.com or just expand the description box down below, you'll find all that information there. If you've enjoyed this series of films, you can subscribe to my channel and also make sure to give this video a thumbs up down below. And I just want to say a huge thank you to everybody who made Hidden Drummers of India possible and also a huge thank you to all of you for joining me on this journey. <laughs>